what we're going to try to do, attempt to do is in 22 minutes, uh, we're going to try to go through a few of these demos. What I'll do is I'll narrate uh, recorded videos for the first three. Uh, it kind of is in the theme, and the last one will be a live demo. I'll try to keep about uh, 10 minutes to 12 minutes for that. Um, effectively, what we're going to do is, as we, um, we have been talking about, uh, we're going to show that a single uh, operating system's common architecture across switching and routing environments is not only possible, it's available today and deployed in production. And so the first one we're going to start off is with the internet peering. Um, and with the internet peering use case, what we're going to do show is that because of the, uh, you know, the advancements in the underlying network silicon, you now have the ability actually to go and deploy a uh, peering edge router with all of the full bells and whistles that you would expect. And so you don't have to fall back on an expensive incumbent. So essentially, in, in this um, demo, what, what we will see is that, um, uh, if you can forward it a bit, um, what, what you will see is that in this topology, um, you will have you have a bunch of Arc, uh, ArcOS routers that have about 37 eBGP peers and eight IBGP peers internally. So the eBGP peers is talking to external um, systems, and the internal th that specific site talking to eight IBGP peers internally. Effectively, we are simulating that um, with. Uh, Ixia, uh, uh, as well as having our uh, ArcOS J Jericho 2-based routers that we talked about um, over here. The circled device under test is what we're going to focus on and um, essentially show that you are able to scale. Because now, 37 times the full internet routing table is many million. So we'll see how we get to 30 million. <clears throat> Start. Um, <clears throat> so. What you will see here is, is that this is the first part of the demo. The second part of the demo, we'll also see how you can apply ACLs and policies to be able to scale that, because an edge router obviously needs to have a lot of policies as well. So what you're seeing here is, um, is that uh, the topology that we already talked about. And you're going to see the initial state on the, that, that device under test. And what you've seen is that once you've put in the number of paths, you have 30 million paths here we are um, uh, show, showing, as well as the number of prefixes showing over 200k prefixes here. Um, this is both for v4 as well as v6. And, and that tells you the ability to, um, that one router has that, that scale. And then in addition to that, what we are also showing that is that there's, um, I think shortly you will see, is that um, there is 37, yeah, if you stop, pause here for a second. Um, by the way, this video is available with another uh, much better voiceover than my, myself, what I'm trying to do here, um, the same video online. So here, what, what you have is you have a, the particular BGP path with 37, um, 37 ECMPs. So you have the ability to show that you can stream, uh, you can share this information with that many paths outside. And that is, is from, from the rib which is the routing base, uh, routing information base, as well as the FIB, which we will show the forwarding side as well, that it's been installed on the router. Um, we are also, yeah, can you move it fast a little bit more? So if you stop here, and you can also see that the, um, the both the LEMs as well as the T, uh, as well as the, uh, the, so the LEM table here, as well as the CAPS table, have filled uh, the objects, as well as showing how much of available memory is uh, on, the, on that particular box. This gives you both V4 and V6 information. So now, um, effectively, we have also have traffic that we're going to start right now. And and then you will see that transmitting of that traffic across all of the environments. The key point with all of this is that one fixed platform, in this particular example, um, uh, it, for, this is the Jericho 2 router, which can scale up to 48 ports of 100 gig. You now have the ability to peer with up to, in this case, 37 um, external peers, uh, as well as eight internal peers, and send traffic. And then, as we get, uh, once we do that, 
You also have the ability then uh, to max out on the ACL. Access lists are used, uh, in this case, ingress ACLs are used to basically uh, to um, uh, apply policy on your node at the edge and be able to then make sure that um, if in case there are certain traffic that you want to take certain actions on, you want to shut certain flows, or you want to um, only allow certain kinds of flows through, you can uh, actually do that um, on that particular node. That's what a typical peering edge router would do. Um, this box essentially has a scale of 96K uh, ACLs in the T camps, right? So effectively, there are two banks, and each of them has 48K ACLs. Um, and we'll show that we can achieve that with this particular uh, demo, the full scale uh, that's possible on the box. So you can see that in the first TCAM, you have 48, first TCAM, you have 48K objects allocated. In the second one, also, you have 48K allocated. You're also seeing that from, from the uh, Ixia perspective that we push, from which we push the uh, uh, AC, uh, ACLs, uh, it's 96K there right here, and um, now traffic is going through. Um, and then, once we do that, we also want to show that, you know, from RKQ perspective, instead of having to log into every single box that you manage, you want to be able to manage um, from a centralized analytics plan. So because we were able to stream out this information onto that x86 uh, uh, platform, effectively you have the ability to see all of those 48K prefixes, the ACL name in this particular example, the packet count associated with it that, that has hit that particular ACL, the byte count, and so on, all of the details that you would expect typically. And it's the type of ACL, it's a V4 ACL. Now, when you're looking at the, the packet count, byte count, normally when we think about ACLs, excuse me, we give that information with a log keyword, and that way we can pick and choose on whether it's the things that we're permitting or the things that we're denying, as opposed to looking at everything. Yes. So if this is giving me a number that really is everything, that's not necessarily different than what a regular interface counter would be giving me. So where does, where does this, what different information does this show compared to an interface counter? So to your point, you can actually build on top of this now, now that you've gotten the information for all of the ACLs um, that, that are actually on the box, you can actually choose to stream specific, for example, specific sets of uh, information. Also, you can build on top of this on RKQ and create profiles or specific kinds of ACLs that you're interested in so that you only see certain things that you're interested in. Well, and, and understand, and, and what I'm guessing is that sequence number has to do with yes. like a, what would be a line number in that case. Um, it, well, I, I guess just from a, a, a quick visual way of looking at this, because when, when, when I'm thinking this and I see this screen right here, given that I'm most likely not going to have memorized 48,000 lines about where Maybe. something is, <laughs> that's not necessarily going to help me any. Correct. So rather than giving me, okay, I got to take this number, now I got to go over here and look at whatever other thing that that was, is there a way or maybe a thought for future of giving something a little bit better than sequence number in terms of a, a descriptor? It's a good point. Okay. Yeah, so essentially this was just zooming into all of the information associated with the specific ACL. But to your point, if I can provide a higher level abstraction or specific thing that I relate to, yeah. uh, then it would be very impactful, absolutely. Yes. So effectively what we've tried to show here is that um, the focus here was to show that you can we are scaling to the limits of that particular router platform, whether that's in the route scale, whether that's in the fan out, whether that's in the ACL scale. And so that's what this particular uh, demo was about. And actually, there is, it's in, in a lot more detail uh, as well if you listen through the voiceover um, on the website. The second one, building upon this, one of the key things you can do actually essentially is the ability to um, do DDoS mitigation as well on this. And so I'll run through this quickly. But uh, if we can go to the topology picture itself, um, what we're doing here is that same J2 box Right Now we know that it can scale to the maximum limits of the platform. If I have a, uh, a simulated DDoS detection system and I can stream S-flow out from 
this platform out into the uh, out into the uh, into this uh, simulated DDoS detection uh, device. Once it detects a set of flows that are um, malicious, it sends an encoded through using encoded BGP flow spec. Uh, information back onto the onto this Jericho 2 router saying these a please apply these ACLs to block these set of flows and so by doing that essentially now you've provided a solution where essentially you have secured the data plane at a very very delicate part or a, of the overall network and in fact these kind of uh, attack vectors are becoming increasingly common so again real time visibility dynamic control and security automation so in the interest of time I'll just speed out to the end so that we have enough time for uh, the EVPN demo, um, but the key point here is to show that um, if yeah, if you could stop here for a second, um, we saw the spike here. The spike here was a simulated DDoS attack, and and what happened was we had a um, the Ixia send a bunch of <coughs> encoded BGP flow spec flow uh, messages to say that you know you need to block X Y Z traffic uh, flows, and then it shoots back down. And again, this video is also available on, on our website. And I'll put links on, on the NFD page as well. So you have a direct link as well. And um, yeah, if you could move forward. So once that is applied, uh, afterwards, effectively, what you're seeing is that the, can you play it? Both for v6 and v4, um, you have, uh, you have uh, you've kind of blocked the DDoS attack uh, vectors, and afterwards you actually also the the third party system can actually withdraw those um, uh, those ACL messages as well, saying that okay now that it's gone we don't have to apply them can pull them out back you, and so then it. Do you guys support a full flow spec Im implementation, not just pushing the ACLs, but redirecting into VRF or tertiary interface? We have so. a bunch of so there to your point there are a bunch of actions that a router should be and can be able to take. We have a list of them. We have drop, we have redirect, mm -hmm. and then we have a bunch of others as well that we are working on. Yeah. And it will be great to know which ones you're interested in, and we can follow up on that. Is that not vendor dependent in implementation? No, that's the sta that the standard says you should support redirect, push ACL. Uh, right, but but vert, well, I mean, you should. I mean, to support there. you know a true flow spec implementation, you should be able to do. We we do that. Both yeah, of that. yeah, yeah, yeah. The WARF infrastructure for us is coming sometime by end of this year, and when it does, we'll support the redirect to WARFs. Yeah. 